Well, here we are. We're doing endocrine 14, which ends up talking about the kidneys. Of course, the kidneys can be called the renal glands. You should know that most animals have two kidneys. But if you're really smart, you'll know that some animals are born with maybe more than two kidneys. I won't say more about that, but just be aware of the fact that there's not always just a pair of kidneys. Okay, let's look at where the kidneys are. Here's a male dog. Of course, a male dog has a penis down here in the ventral aspect, not too far from the flank region. The kidneys we're going to find out are located in the lumbar region, tucked up on either side of the backbone. There are these tubes that take urine from the kidneys to the bladder. The bladder is the storage site for urine. The ureters are tubes that are not always open, but they use peristalsis to bring urine down to the bladder. And in the male, we have a urethra, like we have the female, but the urethra leads into the penis. Okay, so then here's the female dog on the right side. Two kidneys, often not exactly across from each other, as this one's showing. Ureters that lead, that's a tube that lead from the kidney to the bladder. And then in the female, the bladder leads to the urethra, which then exits in a ventral aspect of the vagina. Okay, so what do the dog, cat, horse kidneys look like? Well, it ends up being the cat. There's the cat kidney cut to show you an inside view. The cat and the dog are very kidney shaped. No surprises. Cat, I'm wiggling it now. Dog, I'm wiggling it, wiggling it now. The horse is interesting because, I'm going to enlarge this, and go over those two, no big deal. Please remember that the right kidney of the horse is more horse-shaped. So those two things, right kidney in the horse, heart-shaped, left kidney may be more traditional kidney-shaped. Okay, another thing you should know about the kidneys. They're not really in the abdominal cavity. They're tucked up in the lumbar region, you know, that's near the backbone, the spinal cord in the lumbar region. And so they're called, or I should say maybe they're located in a retro peritoneal location. So they're really behind the peritoneal location. Here's the peritoneal cavity. Here's the dorsal aspect of an animal. So they're like tucked back. Here's the kidney. The adrenal gland as well. So here's the open abdominal cavity where my red pointer is. And the kidneys are actually tucked behind here. Hence the retroperitoneal location. Okay, well, most kidneys do have a typical kidney shape, as this one here is on the upper left of our screen. There's a cortex, which is well demarcated from the medulla. And then when the urine collects in the central portion here, we call it the renal pelvis. And of course, each kidney has a renal 
artery, bringing blood in, and a renal vein, taking blood out. And then the ureter will carry urine to the bladder. Now, just to show you other kidneys, this happens to be the kidney from a mountain line. Well, it's definitely kidney shaped. I just encircled it. And the cortex looks different than the medulla. Well, since we're talking about endocrinology, we just did the structure and comparative structures of the kidney. But we better talk about a hormone, right? Here it is, urethropoietin. That is a hormone released by the kidney. I'm bringing over EPO. That's the acronym for this hormone, urethropoietin. When the kidney senses reduced oxygen, this could be like you're running in Colorado Springs and you live in Illinois or Indiana and you go to Colorado Springs, you're going to sense lower oxygen concentrations. The kidney, and it says here maybe the liver to a smaller, smaller extent, will release urethropoietin. That's a hormone. It happens to be a protein hormone. You know hormones are released into the blood. Where does it go? Well, it's going to go to the bone marrow via the blood supply and tell the bone marrow to increase red blood cell production over here. So you get increased red blood cell production. Those are going to carry more oxygen, and you're going to then tend to mitigate the reduced oxygen levels in the blood that were over here on the right side at the three three o'clock position so you increase red blood cell count increase oxygen carrying capacity and then you'll get less epo production okay let me put that up here because then here's another slide that somebody made and you can have recombinant human erythropoietin made. That means it's going to be an artificial production of erythropoietin by bacteria, basically. But if you inject that in, into the, an animal, you're going to get increased red blood cell production because the bone marrow will make more red blood cells. Here are the citations for the illustrations used in this presentation.